Greta Garbo is my great aunt. Um, her, my grandfather, and she were sister and brother. Um, my grandfather had one child, my mother. Um, so we have a very small family, and um, she's my only great aunt. <laughs> And, and I was her only great niece, so uh, we, it, was a, it was very special, and I, I really recognize that now. Her reputation, I think, was, was created by others, not necessarily by Garbo. I think they attributed a lot to her out of, out of frustration. Um, she did not grant interviews to the press uh, for, you know, I'd say the the last 60 years of her life, um, maybe 70 years of her life. She just was very private. Garba was always interested in art and collecting. She, she knew about what she collected. She studied it. She went to galleries. She went to museum exhibits. She, she pursued art, beautiful objects and art and antiques on the European continent and in the United States. Um, interestingly, uh, a, a very hefty component of her collection, which included three Renoirs and a Bonnard, were all acquired the year after she stopped making Hollywood films in 1942. And that may have had something to do with the beginning of the war. Um, it, it might have been a sort of uh, seen as a, a, a very strategic place to invest in. Um, but she did continue to collect and collect very earnestly and very deliberately throughout her lifetime. She said to me one time, if I hadn't been, I, I would have been good at whatever I had set out to do. She had that great natural confidence and um, she, she was a designer, she was an artist I think to the core, certainly, and when she was no longer acting she applied that um, that artistic approach to her collecting, her interior design. She made, um, a, a, she did paint, and she made a number of um, rugs that she designed. She she painted the the designs out, and they were they were called birds in flight, and they were very postmodern, uh, very lively, very colorful. And she made them with Vasovsky rugs, um, a, a, a place in New York that would then contract for the handmade manufacturing. Um, and she took great pride in them. And her hallway had this beautiful pink and green hued uh, rug that she had designed. Uh, and, and it was very successful. Her home was a sanctuary you didn't get in there uninvited. And when you came to her home, there were sort of rooms that would then open up onto other rooms. And uh, she would maybe let some people in to the first room, the foyer, but they, they wouldn't really, they'd be very, it'd be very tantalizing because you really wouldn't get beyond that. You know, I, I went in all the rooms and that was a, a real treat. And I knew that that was a treat. Um, but she was very private, very protective, um, not really showy in any way. She, she, um, she lived with her things very comfortably, and she, she, um, she entertained in her home, but it was always a very quiet uh, type of uh, entertainment. Her living room was Im is immense. It's, it's a, a very large room for New York. And it has a sweeping 180-degree uh, view of the East River from the UN uh, down. And, and it's just a magnificently sun-filled space. It was covered with fantastic paintings. Um, very colorful, very lively, beautiful Savonnery rug, Louis Cannes and Louis um, Says furniture. Fortuny fabric. I mean, it was just so rich and so colorful and and so happy. Uh, so I think that that um, it really revealed a side to her that loved beautiful things and and loved um, color and vibrancy.